Rajeng, a monster hated and loved by a lot of hunters, is out of the ordinary. Contrary to primeval monsters such as Rathalos and Raytheon, whose skeletons were iterated by Capcom to develop the rest of the monsters we know, Rajeng has a very unique structure. Rajeng is an ultra-aggressive ape inspired by a certain beloved character, Ozaru, from Dragon Ball. Its colossal strength rivals that of the Elder Dragons, and when he enters a state of fury, the fur on its back and head bristles and changes to a golden color. In that state, Rajeng's speed and strength increase even more, destroying everything in its path. We will review the history of Rajeng's fights against the Grit Sword in all the main games of the saga since the Time Attack, or in short, TA, was implemented. TA is a style of combat with rules decided by community consensus, which includes restrictions such as not using traps, light bombs, among others. This video will be divided by generations started with the second Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, in which Rajang was introduced. We will see its evolution, grit sword strategies, and speedruns until the current generation. Rajeng's first appearance was in Monster Hunter DOS. Even for experienced hunters, it was a challenging monster to beat due to the power of its attacks. In this generation, we have the run of Kuda, who faces Chiu Rajeng and Harry Rage facing a Golden Rajeng. These are the most prominent movements of Rajeng. Let's see how to counter some of these moves, safe zones, and other tips. There is a fundamental rule against Rajeng in this installment. Always be in a safe zone. It consists of being a couple of rolls away from a jank and on his right side or hunter's left. This position allows us to not be hit by any movement that our jank makes and allows us a very good momentum to carry out a counter attack with charge. At the same time, being in that position forces the RNG to favor you, since some movements are not executed at that distance. In addition to that, Executing a hit or a charge well, you are going to be able to counterattack, leaving you in a good position after shooting the weapon. If done correctly, it becomes a cycle, but breaking it causes you to lose control of the fight.
A Jang returned for a Monster Hunter for Ultimate with overwhelming force after almost 5 years on the bench. With its Apex version of level 140 Guild Expedition missions, its strength increased so much that some of its attack could instant kill hunters. The hunter's positioning is maintained, standing to the left or the right arm of the Rajang, the strategy of facing Rajang is going to the legs in order to get a trip lock. To execute this, first it's necessary to exceed the threshold of damage in any two parts of its body, exceeding the threshold of damage of the legs before completing the first two thresholds will only produce a static flinch. After completing them, we can throw a chain to the ground by doing enough damage to its front or rear legs, chaining trip locks until we kill it. On the other hand, for Rajang Apex 140, a trip lock is not achieved like the normal Rajang, but it leaves the head exposed more frequently. The main focus of our attacks continues on the legs, whether front or rear legs. One exception is Rampage mod, in which we will punish the hind legs as much as possible since it increases the damage we deal while Rajang is in this state.
While the Marajain did not change its attack patterns in this generation compared to the one in 4 Ultimate, those are more random. Also, Apex Rajang was replaced by Hyper Rajang, a new state consisting of the accumulation of red mist in different parts of the monster's body that affects the speed of the attacks made by those parts. It becomes slower but increases the damage dealt to the hunter. Of all the hunter styles that were added in this installment, the Valor style was the one that allowed us to take advantage of more movements for openings. Being a 4th generation game, Rajang's AI remains particularly identical to that of 4 Ultimate. The main objective is also to chain falls, although it differs in two ways. First one being an increase in the damage threshold for the front and hind legs that makes it impossible to knock it down from a single level 3 charge. So trip locking strategies do not work. The second one being the downward moment of the strong charge in Valor style has a higher point of contact with the monster, so it is preferable to position yourself behind Rajang in order to avoid hitting the body or the tail while aiming for the legs. That said, the head will also be the target of our attacks depending on the openings Rajang provides us.
For Iceborne, Rajang received improvements in its mobility when chaining attacks which made it more difficult to predict. In previous installments, certain patterns such as Lightning Beam can be used in favor of the Hunter. In terms of positioning, it stayed the same with previous generations, but the AI for these generations, Rajang is very unpredictable, and sometimes we will have to break the positioning rule. The focus of our attacks will be the head, since it is the highest weak point and if we reach the damage threshold, we can throw Rajang to the ground continuously. Although, with first Rajang, the damage threshold is higher, so it cannot be stun locked. But in the rage state, the head is even weaker than the normal state. The position and the angle of where we hit Rajang is very important. Since this directs to where it will get thrown at, we also have to avoid getting too close to a wall since it will prevent Rajang from getting stunned and will attack us from the wall.
For this installment, Capcom kept Rajang attack patterns before Iceborne, like the back hope after the Kelby hope. Now Rajang has more openings, so the fight is more controllable. In Rise, we can replace the well known True Charge Slash TCS from a new movement called Raid Slash. This new movement has a better matchup against Rajang, but the TCS has better damage output. So it is up to the hunter which one to use. We also have the Adamant Charge Slash, a warrior bug movement that makes us unmovable to most attacks, being able to receive them with damage reduction and without being affected by roars. Be careful though, if we get too many hits we will get a knockout. The tactic against Rajang in Rise is to go to the head. However, in this installment, it will not fall to the ground by breaking its horns. Also, the tail is much more vulnerable, and when it is in the rage state, we can remove this state by concentrating the attacks on the tail. Doing this will also make it fall to the ground as well as breaking its arms.